Welcome to game number four. The starting hand is missing a fairy. Something like a dream thief or a sleep cursed fairy would be nice. But we still have the motor void, so let's keep this. Turn 1 Thoughtseize gives us all the information we need. This looks like a Grease Fang deck. I do have enough answers on my hand to go against the informant. So let's go for the Thoughtseize. Also, I don't want my opponent to know what cards I have in my hand. Spell Stutter is a great draw for this matchup. I should really be favored here, because as soon as my opponent is going to play Grease Fang, I can kill it with Fairy Fencing. All that I need now is a fairy that can attack. It's like I have the perfect hand, but no pressure. We can either counter or kill. In my opinion, Fatal Push is hard to get out in this matchup, so Fatal Push would be a great way to deal with the informant. And yes, the informant gets pushed. It's nice to draw land here, but we still are missing pressure. So I'm still thinking this could have been a mulligan. But I'm not sure if this mulligan would just have been greedy. Most of the time I do like to keep hands that have much interaction and a motor vault so I can enable a fairy. I can safely attack with the motor vault here, because my opponent does not have Parhelion in his grave. And if he wants to do something to get Parhelion in his grave, he can't afford Grease Fang anymore. But... In the long run, the Muta Vault is not going to change too much. There is the Grease Fang, but that's not a problem for us. The problem right now is that I don't have an attacker, so I really need something like a Brassen Borrower. Or I have to get Rankle out. I can do two things in the same turn here. I can activate the motor vault, attack, and at the same time kill the Grease Fang with the Fairy Fencing. But retrospectively, I don't think this was the best play here. I think it could have been better to wait with the Fairy Fencing until he targets a Perillion. And up to that point, um, find something like a Brassen Borrower with the Free the Fae. And 
and my statement right now is immediately confirmed because I could have countered the Isika's chariot with the spell stutter if I would have kept the mana open for the free the fey. Now having to deal with those tokens is a problem because on the same time we have to deal with Grease Fang or any reanimate spell. Just to clarify, the Motor Volt attack was not worth it. And I don't know what's riding me, but I immediately make the next mistake by passing the turn. Now my opponent is able to crew the chariot in response to anything I do here. Also Thoughtseize doesn't make things better. Now I have to play the fairy fencing before my opponent lets me discard it. Well, I think my mistake was that I was thinking too straightforward. I was only thinking about Greasefang and Parhelion and completely forgot that they play the chariot. But I am here to learn, and this definitely shows me how to handle my counter spells and when not to attack with a Mutter Volt. And I think I can apply this way of thinking also to other matchups. I guess you could call it better safe than sorry. Only attacking with the Muta Vault would not win me the game. So even if I keep a hand without pressure, I have to find ways to win the game in the long run. I mean, this is one of the reasons why Picklock Prankster is in this deck. If we are missing something, he is here to find it. The Sleep Ghost Fairy of course comes too late.
Also, I think I can remember something like don't attack too early with the motor vault if you have other plays. Something like that. Now I find all the attackers, but if it wouldn't be for the chariot, I think I would not have to concede the game here. So all of this boiled down to me being greedy and attacking with the motor vault because I thought I have to play aggressive. But sometimes it's possible to win games in the long run. And I think this is the message I have to take away from here. So I don't even think the hand would have been a mulligan or something like that. I guess the hand was fine. The problem was me being too greedy with that motorboat. Okay, now life goes on. And we are going to board in for Leyland of the Void and two Noxious Grasp. And out go two Fatal Push and for a Picklock Prankster. I indeed do find it funny how often I have a starting hand with three sleep crest fairies on it. But this time I even have the mana to get them all out within turn two. This is going to be fun. So let's start by playing a sleep cursed fairy. Then let's play a Sleep Cursed Fairy. And then let's play another Sleep Cursed Fairy. Well, our hand has all the answers we could need in this match. So I'm thinking about just fairy fencing the informant away. But three damage are not going to break the game here. So I will do that at the end of turn so I could still counter something. And scavenging Oz is really one of the cards that can be a problem because he can get so big that he gets around the fairy fencing. But I still have Noxious Grasp so I can let that resolve and kill him with that. And I use Noxious Grasp instead of fairy fencing because it's two mana against one mana. And if I draw mana in the next turn that means I could either Spell Stutter and Dream Thief, or Spell Stutter and Fairy Fencing. Okay, I didn't draw mana, but that was the plan. So this time again, we just keep the mana open. Now I can either Spell Stutter Grease Fang or Fairy Fencing Grease Fang. Yes, Parhelion is in the grave. In retrospective, I would have used the fairy fencing because spell stutter is also good against something like a hard cast chariot. 
Also, if I use the fairy fencing and respawns to the grease fang trigger, um, he has to take Parhelion back to his hand. But I do think both decisions work here, because now I can bring out two fairy dream thieves and still have the mana for a fairy fencing open. Well, Noxious Grasp is something I want to draw. That makes the decision a little bit harder to play the next Dream Thief, because I do want to use this availability of the Dream Thief. But one damage is one damage and sometimes it can make a difference, so let's just get him out. And it looks like it really didn't make that much of a difference because now I can kill the Grease Fang in response to his ability. We are missing pressure again, but I do like to see the ley line in the starting hand. Vanishing Verse, another great card. I guess next to Poseidon, this is one of the only ways to get rid of the ley line. Sadly, we don't have a Sleep Cursed Fairy we can untap. We also don't have the Free the Fae, so two mana just go to waste. But let's see what the Dream Thief can find. The Watery Grave isn't going to help much. But at least now we have a Fairy. Sadly, this is not the turn I want to Ego Drain, so we still keep up the mana for Spell Stutter. I am not sure if I should counter the Grizzly Salvage in this situation. So if you have any insights, please let me know in the comments. My thought process here is just let it resolve and then counter whatever he finds with it. 
but on the other hand, my opponent now has Perhelion in his grave. So maybe it would have been right to counter the Grizzly Savage. At least now I can safely use the Ego Drain. I could have also just countered the Chariot, but the other cards in his hand weren't really too great, so I figure let's get it out of the way in case he draws another good card. And again I'm learning. I should have read the card better, because with the Delirium he can get himself a Grease Fang, and now I'm not able to counter the Traverse. And if he plays Grease Fang in the next turn, I'm just so closely able to counter it. If he has one more mana, it could break the game for me. Also, I should have looked at his revealed cards earlier. This is another mistake I tend to make. And this is something I can do better in the future. Finally, the Dream Thief gets a companion. The Dream Thief slowly nibbles its way through the life points of my opponent. This is where I realized that I have completely lost track about the revealed cards, so I finally clear that up. Cling to Dust is a great card. I thought about playing it in my 60 myself, but I really don't know how to make room for it, because the flex slot where I would play this card, currently I play Shieldred the Apocalypse, and I do find Shieldred is a little bit better. And Vice of Resurgence is something I would really have to counter. This can break the game for me now. But I figure I'm not able to counter the voice of resurgence because now he can play a Grease Fang and if he would get the Grease Fang out, the game would end here. Yeah, my opponent was really lucky to have the Vanishing Verse when it counted. Now another wrinkle isn't going to help.
Luckily I have enough fairies on the board to counter the Grease Fang, but my opponent has already too much mana. Also that Voice of Resurgence is going to trigger now. This has now really become a dilemma that I can no longer get out of. Normally, Grease Fang is a matchup I should really be able to win, but losing here at least made me learn a few things. Well, I can finally get Rankle out, but that's the end of the game here. So I hope you had fun watching. I hope you also learned a few things. I for sure did. And now before I concede, let's at least play Rankle. <laughs> Now this is the final attack, and for the fun of it, let's discard Sacrifice. My opponent for his final turn. Also bringing out the big gun. Alright, have a great day and see you next time.